Hi everybody, so that is a squirrel cage rotor. You've seen them before in VAWTs and you can even use them in that direction if you want. And I'm about to test this to see how good it is. And of course, this is a question I get asked lots of times. How do you test these things when, well, basically it's a spinning lump of plastic. There's no way of generating any volts or amps out of that. So we can't put a meter reading on it. What we need to know, of course, is how effective it is at turning a force into a rotation because of course when the wind blows on it it is experience of force it's got to push from the wind so how good is it at turning that push into a spin well of course what we need to do is measure torque the interesting thing about torque is torque is not a measure of a force torque is actually a measure of how effective a force is they're making something spin. So here is my door. I can do that with it <laughs> as much as I like. I can put as much force as I like there. It's not going to open the door. I can go here and I can put as much force as I like right here. It's not going to open the door. If I apply the force here, look at that. Of course the door opens. It opens really, really easily because the force, which is the same, has been applied at 90 degrees to the door and at a distance from the hinge and so there's an effective application of force and that causes the hinge to turn and the door to open. So that's what I mean about the effectiveness of a force being measured by torque. That's why torque, which is the letter tau, is equal to the force that is applied, which is the force, the distance it is from the pivot point, which is the radius, and the sine of the angle at which you apply the force. So tau equals rf sine theta. That's why that formula is there. It's just gathering together the important things about torque. That is, how much force, where you apply it, and at what angle you apply it. Okay, so now we understand torque, the question is how do we go about measuring it? Well, luckily enough, there is a mechanism that we can use to do exactly that. And that mechanism is this. It's a worm gear. Actually, a worm gear is a worm wheel and a worm, and they engage with each other. Now, this has been known about since oh, Archimedes. Eh? It's been known about for centuries, and there are three really cool things about this that are going to help us to measure torque of a wind turbine. The first one is, if I give that one full rotation, what it'll do is move the worm wheel by one tooth. That's all. So the ratio of this, the gear ratio, is going to be just the number of teeth on the worm wheel. And there are 20 on here. So I've got a 20 to 1 ratio. That gives me a mechanical advantage of 20 to 1. For every one turn, uh, 20 turns of this, I get one turn of that. And so for every one gram of force on here, I'm going to be able to pick up 20 grams of force there because I get that mechanical advantage. The other thing is it won't turn backwards, which is why they're used in musical instruments. It'll only turn from the worm to turn the worm wheel. If you try to turn the worm wheel, it will lock, which is just great as far as we're concerned if we're trying to pick up a weight. Now, of course, I've drawn this up on Tinkercad, and the Tinkercad files are free for everybody who wants to play with this. The link is in the description. Knock yourself out, guys. Okay, I've printed it off, and there it is put together. Now, I've used skater bearings because they're really cheap and easy to get hold of, and this is 8mm bar that we've got going through the centre. Okay, a few things about this. That is actually just a pulley. We've got a little hole in there to tie some string, and we can wrap the string around and drop it down. And we can add a kilo of weight to it. Now, the force required to lift that kilogram of weight is, by definition, 9.8 newtons. And that's because of gravity. So if that can lift it, then it's able to lift at 9.8 newtons at that distance. Now, that distance from there to the edge of the pulley, which is the radius, is a centimetre. So if we multiply 9.8 by 0 0.01 metres, then we will get the torque that that's producing because it will be 0 0.98 newton meters that it's able to produce if it can lift. Okay, so that's the torque there. And we have a 20 to 1 ratio between this and this. So we get a mechanical advantage of 20 to 1, which means that that will be producing 1 20th of the torque applied here. 
but of course this will be turning very much faster and we always trade speed for torque so the torque can be derived right there by dividing it by 20. So we take our rotor, here it is, stick it on there, go out into the wind and tie our weight on there, the wind will blow that, it will raise that weight and we can directly measure the torque that our rotor is producing and we get a really good measure of how effective that rotor is. So it's a filthy day so I'm not, I'm not going out but I have got my little wind turbine with its measuring device and a hairdryer and if we turn the hairdryer on there you go you can see that the worm gear has been driven it is turning that pulley so we're going to be able to do exactly what we said we wanted to do. That is awesome, actually. Okay, you've got to remember that at one time, of course, there were no electric meters or strain gauges. You had to come up with a way of um, measuring what you wanted to measure so you could see how effective it would be. And the good thing about doing that, of course, is it always generates other ideas because I have another idea based on this. But we have a way of measuring how effective our wind turbine is at turning that force into rotation so that we can do something with it. Volts and amps, well they tell you about the generator but they don't tell you how effective that force being turned into torque is. So now we've got a way of doing it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.